Risk Management Primer Purpose To obtain better project outcomes, including budget, schedule, and operational performance by implementing an appropriate risk management process. Audience Project Managers, Project Sponsors, Team Members, and Other Key Stakeholders Learning Objectives Understand the benefits of good risk management. Learn to design and implement the right risk management process. Distinguish between issues and risks. Examine potential categories of risk. Establish appropriate risk response strategies and action plans. Understand common way risk templates. Risk management is a complex topic with countless published sources for reference. This course is a primer on risk management. More advanced coverage of risk management topics is out of scope for this course. Additional sources have been identified on the Common Way Wiki under the Reference Library. Risk Management Process Overview the purpose of risk management is to secure better project results by proactively identifying, assessing, and controlling undesired outcomes. Risk management helps project managers determine priorities, allocate resources, and implement processes and actions that reduce the risk of the project not reaching its goals and objectives. Risk management is a four-step process with integrated monitoring and control feedback mechanisms. The process is initiated when the project is launched and continues through the life of the project. Risk management is not a standalone process, but rather integrated with other key project management processes, including issues, schedule, change, and scope management. Risk management is the responsibility of all stakeholders. The risk management process steps are establish the process framework, identify risks, Analyze and rank risks. Develop and implement risk response strategies and action plans. All projects, regardless of size or complexity, have inherent risks and can benefit from a formal risk management process. Remember, good risk management takes time. Given this, it is essential that the project manager adopts a process that is appropriate for the complexity of the project. The benefit gained from a well-defined and orchestrated risk management process outweighs the costs. These benefits include an enhanced understanding of the project, a more thorough understanding of potential risks, their impact, and the assignment of risks to team members best equipped to manage each risk. The net result of risk management is a more realistic schedule, budget, and project plan, and a less reactive project environment. Risks versus issues. Before examining the risk management process, we will review differences between issues and risks. Project risks are uncertainties that could impact a project's objectives. Risks can be threats that disrupt the project and create losses or opportunities that benefit the project. If the project's objectives are not clearly defined, it will be difficult to identify, analyze, rank, and manage those risks that could have the greatest impact. Risks left unmanaged can morph into significant issues with considerable impacts. Conversely, issues are events that have already occurred, are in dispute, or are unsettled and require immediate attention and resolution. Let's clarify the differences through an example. Your project is dependent on the latest version of Microsoft SharePoint services. The vendor has assured the market the release will be available in January. Your plan reflects a March installation date. Given the vendor's history, there is a possibility the date could slip. This is a risk that should be reflected in the risk register with probability and impact ratings, a risk action plan, and owner. By identifying this risk early, the team has the opportunity to proactively address it. For example, select another product, and eliminate the risk or plan to upgrade at a later date. If the release is delayed and SharePoint is still the product of choice, the team implements the action plan to upgrade at a later date. 
If the risk has not been identified early on, the team would be contending with an issue that could impact the scope, schedule, and budget. Next, let's look at the risk management process at a high level. Establish process, framework, and logistics. To help define the process, participants must understand key risk management concepts and tools. To build this awareness, review how to define a risk event, the meaning of probability and impact ratings, appropriate risk response strategies, the risk management plan, the risk register, and any other organizational specific tools that will be used to support the risk management process. It is essential that the team secures a briefing on the fundamentals of the project. This includes project objectives, key features, functions, and technologies, financial structures, who will be involved in the design, development, testing, implementation, and support of the product, vendors and internal staff, customer expectations, impacts on business processes, and how the product will be deployed and supported. Once a shared understanding of both the process and the project are established, work with the team to develop a list of risk categories. Risk categories provide a structure to systematically identify risks. Common risk categories include new technology, complexity with interfaces, performance and reliability, procurement, suppliers, regulations, resources, requirements, funding, estimating, and environmental risks. Risk categories must be customized to suit the specific needs of the project. The final step is to determine the risk management framework. This includes the process which the team will follow to identify risks, for example, brainstorming, and classify risks, for example, probability and impact. How risks will be monitored and controlled, how risks will be reviewed, escalation processes, roles and responsibilities, and frequency of risk scanning and review sessions. Factors important in structuring the process includes the project's complexity level and the organization's risk tolerance level. Projects with high complexity and or low risk tolerance will require more sophisticated risk management. Consequently, the team will devote more time to risk management and control. Projects with a complexity level of two or three should not exit the planning stage without a clearly defined risk management plan. The plan must describe the process including risk identification sessions, monitoring and control functions, the review of major risks with their respective steering committees and executive management. All projects, regardless of complexity level, should start the risk register during the planning stage. This risk register is also input into the dashboard reporting for executive management. The risk management plan, the risk register, and the implementation of the risk processes are key controls that will be evaluated during an independent verification and validation process, IVNV. Identify risks. The purpose of the risk identification process is to identify a comprehensive list of potential risks that could impact the project. Risk identification must account for both internal and external factors. Risk identification is an iterative process that begins during the planning stage and continues through the project's life cycle. At the outset of a project, the project manager should conduct one or more identification sessions with key stakeholders. For large, complex projects, several days of workshops may be required. For smaller, less complex projects, a couple of hours may suffice. After the initial identification sessions are held, regular risk scanning sessions are planned and conducted to determine whether the risk landscape has changed. These are typically abridged versions of the risk identification sessions held at the start of the project. The classic forum to identify risk is a brainstorming session. To orchestrate an effective session, assemble a diverse team of stakeholders with different perspectives. Be prepared to balance exceedingly pessimistic or optimistic views. Establish an environment that fosters creative thinking and ensure that the facilitator, usually the project manager, is independent and has a comprehensive understanding of the risk process. 
During these workshops, the project manager must be adept at separating issues from risks. There are several techniques the project manager can use to solicit risks, including, but not limited to, one, force field analysis, two, constraint analysis, three, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or four, asking probing questions related to the triple constraints, scope, cost, and schedule. Five, reviewing risk events from similar projects to determine whether they can happen again, and application of specific techniques are out of scope for this course. The Common Way Wiki Reference Library contains links to articles on these techniques. At the conclusion of the risk identification session, the team will have generated a long list of potential risks. Some teams choose to stop here and manage all the risks identified. This is a mistake because not all risks are relevant. It is essential to hone this list through the analysis and ranking stages in order to focus the team on managing the most significant risks. Analyze and rank risks. Now the team must determine which risks are significant enough to warrant active management. This is accomplished through an analysis and ranking process that leverages the risk register. The risk register is the common way tool for tracking, prioritizing, and managing project risks. Here are the process steps. First, describe each risk, including the factors that could cause the risk to occur and its potential impacts on the project. The risk impact can be positive or negative and should quantify or qualify the costs or opportunities of the risk occurring. Next, assign each risk a probability rating and impact rating. The probability rating indicates the likelihood the risk will occur, while the impact rating specifies level of impact to the project should the risk occur. The common way risk register uses a simple, high, medium, low scale for both probability and impact ratings and then calculates a priority score and priority rating based on the selected probability and impact ratings. The risks of the highest priority score and priority rating should be managed most closely. Ensure each risk has a risk owner. The final step in the risk analysis and ranking process is to evaluate the interdependencies between risks. There can be a cascading effect across risks. One risk occurs triggering another risk, which triggers another risk. Carefully note, any risks that can trigger other risks consider increasing their priority score to reflect their interdependencies. Note, there are sophisticated, quantitative, and qualitative approaches for risk analysis and risk ranking. Example, Monte Carlo, simulation, decision trees, sensitivity analysis, failure mode effect analysis. These methods are out of scope for this course. At the conclusion of this step in the process, the team must have filtered out minor issues and created a prioritized list of risks that require some type of treatment. Risk response strategies and action plans. During this stage, the risk owners collaborate with the project manager to develop a risk action plan or treatment plan for each risk. Strategies should be developed for risks that present the most significant consequences or best opportunities. Do not forget opportunities. Exploitation of opportunities is a key component of the risk management process. The continuum of, of potential strategies is highlighted below. To be effective, each strategy must be manageable, reduce negative impacts, or increase opportunities. Leverage available resources and be cost effective. Avoidance. Avoidance requires elimination on both the probability and impact of the risk from occurring. This is the best risk response strategy because the, the root cause of the risk is addressed. Acceptance. Acceptance implies no active response strategy is adopted because nothing is possible or alternatives are too expensive to implement. This is the least optimal strategy. If selected, a contingency plan should be developed to address the fallout should the risk occur. Mitigation. Mitigation requires reducing either the impact or probability of the risk from occurring. Transfer. Transfer shifts the risk to a third party better equipped to handle the risk. 
the risk is not eliminated. Transfer strategies include shifting the work to vendors or securing insurance to cover the cost of the risk should it occur. Enhance. Enhance is a response to an opportunity that increases either the probability or impact of the opportunity occurring. Exploit. Exploit is a response to an opportunity that guarantees the opportunity will occur. This is the most effective strategy for realizing opportunities. Although multiple strategies may be suitable for managing a given risk, the risk owner must select the most appropriate strategy. If the selected strategy proves to be ineffective, it can be replaced with a different strategy. After the strategy has been selected, the risk owner must develop an action plan and assign an action owner with the proper skills. A solid action plan should include risk triggers to caution the team of imminent risk events. Since the goal of the risk response strategy is to mitigate slash eliminate a, a risk or to enhance slash exploit an opportunity, the risk manager must reevaluate the probability and impact of the risk occurring in light of the risk response strategy developed. If the risk strategy is not effective in reducing the risk or increasing the opportunity, an alternative strategy and action plan should be developed. Finally, the risk owner has to determine whether the proposed strategy introduces new secondary or residual risks and whether these secondary risks are acceptable. If acceptable, the residual risks should be added to the risk register and managed through the standard risk management process. If threats introduced by the secondary risks are too severe, the risk response strategy and action plan should be reworked. Once an acceptable approach is developed, the project manager records the risk strategy, action plan, post-implementation risk strategy assessment, action owners in the risk register. The risk owner is responsible for implementing the risk strategies and action plans. Sometimes the risk owner requires the assistance from others to implement action plans, for example, technical staff. In these instances, the action owner will be different from the risk owner. Risk action plans should be implemented immediately after they are defined. The project schedule and project management processes should be updated to include risk monitoring and control sessions, risk response action planning activities, and risk progress reporting. Remember, proper risk management takes time and must be accounted for in your plans. Monitor and control risks, archive history. Known risks identified during the risk identification process and new risks that surface must be monitored and controlled to ensure prompt action is taken when appropriate. Since risks can evolve over time, monitoring requires both reporting how the team is doing against risk action plans as well as any adjustments to the strategies and action plans to address changes in risk characteristics. The project manager should immediately implement standard risk action plan reviews and mini risk identification sessions to scan for new risks. Team members should understand project risks and impacts. High impact risks should be reported regularly to the steering and executive committees so they are aware of the potential impacts. If a risk occurs, escalation procedures and contingency plans should be executed at once. Money to support contingencies should be budgeted in a management reserve or contingency account during the budgeting process because contingencies to address risks almost always require additional funding. Contingency plans requiring significant changes to the budget, baseline, schedule, scope, or quality of the project must go through the formal change control process. The project manager is responsible for ensuring that risk documentation is current and archived during the closure so that the lessons learned can be shared with other project managers and teams. Key Point Synopsis Good project management requires implementation of an effective risk management process that begins at the start of the project and continues through the life of the project. A solid process should include the following steps. Establish a risk management framework. Identify risks. Analyze and rank risks. Identify risk owners. 
Develop risk response strategies and action plans for all high risks. Analyze effectiveness of risk response strategies. Identify residual risks. Adjust strategies if necessary. Assign action step owners. Update risk plan, risk register, budget, schedule, RACI, communication plan. Monitor control report on new and existing risks. Archive, share, risk lessons learned. This concludes the risk management course.